Welcome to Nutty Buttery. Uh-oh, uh-oh, you know what it is, Swear TV. That boy is a foodie, and I don't even know what is going on right now. What has Swear pulled, dog? We got somebody special. Let me let you see the branding on the shirt first. Hold on, because we got the merch on deck. You got to get the merch. It ain't two for 25. We don't know. It might be expensive, but let them know what's going on, baby. Hey, Swerve, um, this is your chef, Chef Shelly, owner of Some of This and Some of That, and we are at Nutty Buttery today and doing a live in-person cooking. Um, today, we're gonna do a creamy scallop and shrimp pasta, something very healthy going into the summertime and trying to get fit. This is something easy that you can make at the house, and we're just gonna kind of jump into a Shout out to Swerve De Niro, DJ Swerve De Niro, Swerve Nation Radio for having me, for having for partnering with us and we're excited to show you all a new recipe today okay okay this is the first of many right here look the you crazy know. thing is we met on a, it was a natural vibe so you know i yes. swear to i made you a natural vibe it was uh Put a little olive oil okay okay let that heat up we'll talk about the vibes later <laughs> we're talking about food right now shut up swear look you know once i get in the zone that's it i can't i uh, can't be I see you got your, uh, they don't even know, but I see you got your, uh, your, your kind of like you represent your sore too and all that. Yeah, shout out to uh, Delta Zion, Fayetteville State, Spring 08. It's our 13th anniversary this weekend, so all of my Ooh. lines is coming through Richmond. Ooh, whoop. And, you know, we just here to have a good time. You, have you ever cooked for them before? Um, yes, a lot of them have had my food at home coming down at Fayetteville State University. Um, they know that I, it's some of this and some of that. So, you know, I literally cook some of this and some of that. You know, it's not always soul food. You're going to get seafood. You're going to get barbecue. Some of everything. Some of this and some of that. It is. Make sure you follow that too on Instagram. You can see me on the story. So, follow that what I put on that IG story for you. So, we're going to go ahead and throw in our scallops. Mmm. Scallops. That's shrimp. expensive. That's scallops. Them scallops be so expensive, though. Every time uh, I go shopping, nigga, they be so expensive. Like. To the, to the Population, yes. Yes, yes. Um, you know, being a being a caterer, being a chef, you have uh, access to a lot of different um, restaurant places uh, that you can buy food in bulk. So mm -hmm. it's not it's not too expensive for us. But yeah, for regular population that just going in Kroger or something to trying to get it, yeah, it's gonna be a little expensive. Okay. So how you how you got how did you get into the little cooking vibe? Like how long? Like what was the what was the first thing you ever cooked? Maybe as a young lady, teenager, I don't know, grown, I don't know when you started cooking. So, you know, share that story real quick. Yeah, so um, I actually went to Meadowbrook High School. And in middle school, you know, we had home ec. So, you know, it starts you off with a little bit of, you know, little simple recipes, a little homemade pizza, grilled cheese. But once I went to Meadowbrook, I actually got into culinary arts and cake decorating. And so we actually convinced our teacher at the time, Ms. Dolberry Burke and Ms. Um, Gwendolyn Goo. Um, shout out to them. They're from Prince George area, and they have been teaching at Meadowbrook. They've since retired, but um, they got us into cooking. So we had convinced them to do the Monarch Cafe, and we basically had took pre-orders from the teachers, set up our um, culinary wing for them at lunchtime. And, you know, they would have a variety of meals that we would offer that, that they would pre-order. Sometimes it would be spaghetti. You know, we would have desserts, pound cakes. You know, and all of this was from scratch, you know, because that's how our teachers taught us. Like, everything was from scratch. So it was no box stuff. And ever since then, I, you know, had a passion for cooking, but I also played basketball. So mm, okay. that was a conflict of interest. I really couldn't find a good college that I could play basketball and, you know, have a culinary. So you're, you're a walking bucket, bucket and a walking chef. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> Wow, I wouldn't have thought of that. That's crazy. Yep, so I ended up just choosing basketball as the first career went on to Fayetteville State. And oh, played play basketball, yep, oh. at Fayetteville, yep. Wow. And so I would cook for my teammates. We would be stuck there. It would just be us at holiday weekend. So I would cook for the boys and the girls basketball team. So that's how I started cooking for people, you know, in a large ball. So it just, it's kind of just taken off since then, since I moved back to Ooh, Richmond. Okay. I've just been, you know, still getting into it and... That's kind of where we at now. Now I have time to really just focus on it. And, you know, so that's that. And I'm going to sprinkle this actually with the um, a few seasonings here that I have. Um, some Italian seasoning, some Creole seasoning, some paprika, and some um, garlic powder. Okay. And I'm going to just give it a quick stir with my finger. I don't really need to do a lot just to mix it all up good. And we're just going to season 
Once our um, shrimp and our scallops are halfway done, we're just gonna season that lightly. And we're gonna leave a little bit because once we make the um, cream sauce for it, then we'll need the rest of that seasoning. But just to give it a light seasoning, and you don't want to over season the seafood because if you use too much uh, especially the creole or any cajun seasoning it's going to get really salty mm. so you want to just you know lightly season it um and let it cook some more like i said we will season it again as we you know as the dish continues to be prepared but we just want these to cook to where it's pink on the pink is gone from each side and it still has a little bit of time on that mm, 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 mm. so definitely give me the the healthy itis today. Yes, yes. <laughs> and instead of our regular noodles, what we actually have is um, zucchini that I have spiraled down. So you can go get zucchini from, you know, any farmer's market, any grocery store. Get you a little spiral. You can order it off of Amazon. Sometimes they sell it in the grocery store. And just spiral that zucchini down, and you can actually have a noodle. And you, mm. you, you can use other things. You don't have to use zucchini. You can use squash, um, cucumbers, but I usually prefer if I'm going to substitute a noodle, then I will use the zucchini and spiral that down versus some of the other veggies. Oh. But it's all personal preference. Mm -hmm. Um, well, getting back to the sports, though, I know we cooking, but <laughs> you know, I'm a, I'm a collector of jerseys. The first time you met me, I think I had a jersey on, yes, so you yes, know. yes, so you gotta know. <laughs> Shout out to the NBA too. They had a whole big kick with the whole, you know. HBCU, yeah. yeah. It's a thing. Like people, people really sleep on HBCUs, thinking that you know you can't go and excel. But I mean, we had Daryl Armstrong. We have, you know, Avion Crockett. People that have come out of Fayetteville and that's doing other things versus, you know. So you can you can still be, you know, a superstar. That's all. That's all on personal. You know, that's that's what you're gonna put into to your energy and to your goal and to your aspirations. So it don't matter where you go. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about your drive, your determination. So, you know, people sleep on HBCU. So I'm glad that the NBA finally, you know, especially with, um, what's this guy's name? Uh, Chris Paul, you know, with Chris Paul really kind of, you know, taking that charge and making sure that people are aware about HBCUs. He actually, you know, is taking classes at Winston-Salem State. So that's CIAA. So that's good exposure for all of us. And we just got to keep that same energy, keep on getting that name out there and showing people that, you know, it's people from HBCUs that's doing things with their lives and that's, you know, making a difference in their community as well. It's not just, you don't have to go to these big D1s, these 18 colleges, you know, to, to be somebody. I might they go to a PWI. But working in Petersburg, I work closely with Virginia State. Got a lot of respect for Virginia Union, working with their students as mm -hmm. well. So, you know, I, I do I do support the HBCUs. You know, yeah. I've, I have had interns from HBCUs as well. You know, and some of them are, are well-known teachers. Some of them are part of your Soro as well. Mm -hmm. So I work definitely close with the HBCU. I think that's very important. So I'm glad you touched on that. But I still want to give me a, a jersey. Like okay. if, you got, if you got a jersey, I need that for my collection. I'm about to earn that jersey, nah, though. Nah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? You got, you got to earn I'm gonna have to earn the jersey. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I got to put that in my man cave. Autograph though. You know, I need the whole nine yards. My I boys know I love the jerseys though. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's you know you know it's it's. It's so much, you know, like I said, I went to Meadowbrook High School and, you know, I was a star athlete there. So being back in Richmond and just connecting, reconnecting with some of my classmates, I know it's about to be our 15 year reunion because we graduated in 06. And just to see everybody, just to see, you know, that still that same love, that same energy. And not just because you were an athlete or, you know, you were this superstar. People just truly respected you. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, so that's why I wanted to kick off my catering career in Richmond because this is home and then you know I might not be here all the time but this is where I wanted to start the base set and then from there it's you know sky's the limit kind of thing so, so are you working on like anything beyond just these type of sessions I want you to your IG so are you like doing like a this is a cookbook. You doing like any type of events coming up? Anything that you can just let the people know about? Or just yeah. So there is a um, there is going to be a cookbook coming up. Um, it's going to be a small digital cookbook that you're going to be able to purchase, and you'll have the um, the ingredients, the recipes, everything that you're supposed to do with um, particular meal. Some of my um, famous dishes, and I also have trapping chef coming. Um, basically, it's kind of like trapping paint, but with a twist. So just imagine that you are at a, you know, live cooking session, um, a cooking class, if you will, 
and it's turned up. You so know it's what a saying? DJ like Swerve gonna be that DJ. Yeah, look, like, you gonna have you got DJ Irv, right. you got DJ Swerve. Like you know, it's all about showing love, getting everybody exposure because yeah. Trapping Chef is something new. You know, you're gonna be able to if you if you're not really good with cooking and you kind of shy to do it in front of everybody, that's fine. You can still come. Uh, we're gonna have paint um, sessions set up too, so you can you can choose the paint, you can choose the cook, you can just choose to turn up. You know, but it's gonna be a good vibe. It's something different. It's something that we still able, especially with COVID going on, we still able to keep social distancing and allow people to kind of just get back out, but be able to hear good music, have good food without having to really step foot in the club. You know, as you get older, it's like, you know, no, no <laughs> knock to the clubs, but um, you know, we just trying to do something, you know, for the grown crowd or the people that's just, you know, hey, I just want to go out and turn up a little bit. You know, I ain't trying to be too turned, you know, sweaty. Yeah. But, you know, I'm trying to have good music, good vibes. And that's kind of really what Trap and Chef is all about. It'll start here in Richmond, and we'll be taking it on the road. And so it's it's just kind of, it's a good time. You know, we trying to partner with other um, chefs that are in other areas, other big cities. So that way we come bring these same vibes from Richmond, you know, to Atlanta to dc you know to miami just having this having this this culture it's like a culture experience that you've never had before mm -hmm. and you know that's really what trap and chef is it's something different it's something for the people for our people um and so yeah so that's really what i'm working on right now and that'll be rolling out y'all will be seeing so i've been doing soft promo with that but y'all actually start seeing event um details coming soon so you know just make sure you following some of this and some of that on Instagram, and make sure you fly, um, follow and flying Delta, my personal page, so that way you can kind of stay in the know of different activities and, and events and stuff like that that I'm doing. Okay. So, we done talked the good bit. So, look, yeah, I know what to say. Yeah. Cook down, you know, it's steaming over here, but that's what we needed to do. Okay, so even though they, we might fast forward in a little bit so they can see it, but what's after you handle this business, what comes next after this to make the meal complete? So this is so what we're gonna do next is our seafood is done. We just taking this out of this pan. We have about a, a cup of um, heavy heavy cream, heavy whipping cream that we're gonna pour right into this um, right into this pan right here, mm -hmm. and we'll just throw in the rest of our ingredients. We'll cook down our asparagus noodles. And then we'll throw, once our asparagus noodles, the heavy whipping cream, everything is kind of boiled up a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it's thickened up, we'll just throw our seafood right back in. But we're just going to place our seafood here for right now, just to get it out the way. Mm, and then... Smelling good too. Smelling good. Thank you, thank you. Yes. I see my boy's been calling too. I was like, ah, okay. yeah, we're going to talk to y'all. Y'all, y'all pull up, boy. Y'all going to get a little taste of this. Yep. If not, don't make me be fat and take like half this home, so y'all better have them good. Look, I brought containers. I brought everything that they would need. So, yeah, so I'm just going to throw this right in here. And then this is the heavy whipping cream. This okay. is a cup of that. We're actually going to throw... Um, this is about eight tablespoons of butter. And just cut into two, two four feet, four... Um, Eight, four four tablespoon pieces. Okay. And so we'll let that cook down. It's gonna cook up real quick. Let it get to a little bubble. And once it starts to heat up a little more, then we'll throw in our um, zucchini noodles, our spinach, our tomatoes. Let all that in our some of our extra seasoning. Let all that mesh together. And then we'll throw in um, some cheese and our seafood at the end, at the very end. Okay. So it's not, it doesn't take too long. It's already melting. Let me just help it a little bit. And so it's very simple. You know, you can, you can do the same recipe. You can use chicken. Um, you don't have to just do seafood with it, but you know, sometimes when I do these cooking shows, I try to cook things that I know that I'm eating currently. And, mm -hmm. Like I said, with the summer coming up, because I referee to um, for high school in CIAA, but I took off this past season, so I just been trying to get myself back, you know, healthier. So a lot of these recipes, I typically would have used chicken or something like that in previously, but now I'm just more like, let me swap out the veggie noodles and let me, you know, do seafood versus chicken. So, so you see, it's at a boil already, and that's exactly what we need. 
actually before I do all the rest of that, I'm gonna throw some of this cheese in now. Mm. Just to kind of give it a gauge. And if you feel like that is too thick, you can go back and add some more heavy whipping cream if you choose. But this is just um, Parmesan cheese, mozzarella, um, Asiago, and um, it's just kind of a nice Italian blend. And you see, it doesn't take long, especially in this cast iron skillet. It'll <laughs> it'll cook like you want. And I don't really like like I mean it's pasta, but I don't like for it to be too soupy. So I'm gonna add just a little bit of um, seasoning in it, and that'll give it that color as well for that Cajun kind of look. And so then I'm just gonna throw in my zucchini noodles that I have spiraled down. And feel free to go back in and add some salt and pepper if you would like, but because it's so many seasonings already that's in here, I don't feel like I need to, mm -hmm. but again, all personal preference. Look at that, y'all, it smell good. It's coming right through the mask, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Stomach is like talking to me right now. Yep, and keep in mind that the zucchini, it has water, even though I have had it already today, I have, you know, let it sit there on paper towels to kind of really drain that moisture. Mm -hmm. It's still gonna have some type of moisture to it, so before you start adding extra heavy whipping cream, just give it a little bit to see if any moisture that's gonna get pulled out of those noodles might give you that extra texture that you're looking for. And so that's pretty much it. We're just letting the noodles cook down to soften up. Okay. And once that softens up, we'll add in, about halfway through, we're adding our tomatoes and we're adding our spinach. All right, well, we look, we're, uh, we might be, we'll be right back after these messages, you know what I mean? <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Yeah, Spirit TV. Shut, shut it, baby.